Today we will be demonstrating a surgical case for a carotid endorectomy. This is a procedure to remove the buildup of plaque on the bifurcation of the artery. The carotid arteries are the main blood vessel that supply blood to the brain. Narrowing of the arteries would decrease the blood flow to the brain. If there is a blockage in the vessel, this could result in a stroke. We would use a CT angiography to diagnose this disease. Here we will demonstrate in this video how to set up our back table, mayo stand, and draping procedures. Here we have the circle and circulator opening the back. <laughs> Here we have the circle and circulator opening the back. Can I go wet my hands? Check for my indicator, it looks good. No rips, no tears, no condensation, get it out. Put him in here.
I have drapes. Okay. Do I have drapes? Okay. Yeah. I also need a size seven and a half glove. For patient positioning, the patient would usually be placed in a supine position with a firm head holder. You could use a, a pillow. And then um, the most important thing for the carotid and endorectomy is the hyperextension of the neck. 
You don't want to hyperextend it too much where it can cause pain or further injury. Uh, but you can use a jelly roll or sometimes we will even use a shoulder roll, which can be made out of a blanket, or sur um, surgical towel, whatever is the preference. Surgeons do use a lot of various ways to hyperextend the neck, so it's all based on surgical preference. Um, and then, oh, I think that, oh, and also you can use a surgical tape to tape the patient's head away from the site of incision. Um, and that just also helps aid with uh, hyperextension. And they would usually use a silk tape so it's not so harsh on the patient's skin. So for patient prep, we would use a chloroprep. Um, you would start by shaking or breaking this and then it would let out the solution out at the end, just like so. All right. Okay. We would prep in a counterclockwise motion starting from closest to the incision site and making our way out in nice steady movements until we get the entire area and we would prep as if prepping for a thyroidectomy so the neck the air around the chin area and the actual incision site when prepping the patient you want to make sure that you don't get any of the chloroprep solution inside of the ear just because it can cause some major issues for the patient like hearing loss so you want to stay just below the ear and around the clavicle area of the patient when prepping so for patient draping we would start with a three-quarter sheet and we would drape inferiorly first we would then start to square off the incision using surgical towels. <laughs> Other way. We would then add the IO band. It is huge. That's for him. We would then add a thyroid ectomy sheet on our drape on top. Yeah. Starting by draping superior first we would hand off this part to the anesthesiologist for them to clamp it to two IV poles on either side of the patient's head And then we would drape inferiorly towards the bottom of the patient and remove the paper in the middle. You also should always ask your surgeon before placing your drape if they would like stickies on or off. The most important instruments for the Mayo stand for a carotid endarectomy. We have a right angle with a passer. It is used to continue the blood flow, control the blood flow, and keep a clear view for the surgeon. Um, the passer is used 
to keep a steady moving flow for blood and to make sure that the suture and tissue isn't damaged. We have the wheat lander. It is to hold the incision, hold the incision and have a clear open view. Allows the space to directly um, have a clear directly removal of the plate during the surgery. We have the run mail tourniquet with the red rubber catheter. It helps to control blood flow in the neck. The hook is used to gently hold the blood vessels and to continue the blood flow in the area. The red catheter is used, is used alongside the Romel catheter tourniquet hook to help manage blood flow. And the, the catheters are really flexible and they can be used to hold the vessels and keep it going to help with drainage. The Javit carotid artery clamp is used to stop the blood flow in the carotid artery. This is the shunt that will go in there and it will just clamp like that. We also have umbilical cord tape as well as some vessel loops. And they're soft and flexible. The vessel loops are rubbery. This is a soft, flexible material and it's used to help manage the blood flow and keep things like retrain and keep it in place. Following, we have the pot scissors. These are special scissors. You see its angle. The pot scissors are used during the procedures to kind to cut through the neck and cut through blood vessels. It's angled. They also have it in the um, a angle that goes up. So if you need to get an angle that way. Following, we have a freer elevator. The freer elevator helps separate. It's very dull and very gentle use. It's used to separate tissue gently and carefully lift layers of the tissue away from the artery. Freer elevator. Next, we have the Mills Dennis gripping. Mills Dennis forcep. It is a gripping tool. Small tweezers. It is used to manipulate tissue and to hold tissue during the carotid endorectomy procedure. Following, we have a 10 cc with a lure lock needle. It would be with heparin. We'll have heparin installed. And it is used to help prevent blood clots. Heparin's used to, um, heparin's used to, it's a blood thinner. So it helps continue to make sure that the blood is slowly moving, moving smoothly. Following, we have the Gerald tissue forceps. It is used to hold and grab on tissue. Next, we have a hemo clip applier with blocks. It is a hemostasis um, tool used to help control um, bleeding. The clip applier will go inside the staple. And it'll come out with a staple and we'll clamp that to a vessel to control bleeding. Following, we have some bulldogs. These are also to help control bleeding. They are temporarily stop the bleeding in the procedure of a carotid endorectomy. This is a bakey. And this is another bulldog. Following. We have a Coley's clamp, very small, angled. A Coley clamp is used to control the bleeding in the artery. It's a very strong clamp. Statsinski Vena Cava clamp. Um, it is like a garden hose, temporarily used to stop bleeding. Um, blood flow in any blood vessels. Very small. 
Perfundant clamp is used to control blood flow and it's temporarily to shunt anything really tightly. Perfundant. And here we have a mosquito with sutured booties. Sutured booties are a are a countable item. The mosquito is a small, gentle, tiny, tiny um, instrument used to hold blood vessels. And the booties goes at the end to help protect the um, protect the striations while picking up suture and tissue. Oh, I guess I'll put down my Sudoku. This patient was given propofol as general anesthesia before the procedure. He was given an endotracheal tube to establish the airway and was given midazolam before the surgery to calm his nerves. Um, he was given cefazolin as an antibiotic before the surgery began to prevent infection. Um, Propofol is based on the patient's weight, and I placed an arterial line to monitor the patient's blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen level throughout the procedure. During a surgical timeout, the surgical team takes a moment to ensure patient safety by confirming crucial information. This is our timeout. Patient identification is John Doe, 7-19-1950. The procedure and site verification, it's a right carotid endorectomy, no known allergies. The patient has had two grams of cefazolin and the fire risk is three. Does everyone know everyone? Yes. Any concerns? No. Okay, does everyone agree? Yes. Okay. In conclusion, to summarize the key steps, the operating room was meticulously prepared to ensure cleanliness and sterility. Every necessary piece of equipment, supplies, and instruments were carefully gathered and arranged, with special attention given to setting up the Mayo stand. The patient was positioned and draped to ensure proper comfort and safety. A thorough check and setup of the anesthesia equipment was conducted, and a surgical timeout was performed to confirm unanimous agreement before the initial incision was made. These are just some of the steps taken to prepare for each and every surgery in order to maintain the safest environment for the patient.